Here at Super 10 Global Infrastructure, we have Frederick Bambud, Director at EDEC Infra. Welcome, Frederick. Thank you. You've created a market index for industry benchmarks. Why did you do this? There's a strong demand from investors to better understand the risk and the return characteristics of infrastructure investments, and they had very, very little data. They had no way to understand how much to invest or how to monitor their existing investments. So that's why we did it. And how did you go about doing it? It was quite difficult. It took four years collecting data, um, building models, arriving at a representative set, uh, and allowing us to produce a fair value estimate of risk and performance for the global uh, infrastructure market. You mentioned it was quite difficult. In terms of the data collection exercise, how much data did you actually need and how easy was it to collect? So we needed to collect a representative set. So there's about 7,000 investable infrastructure companies uh, in all the main markets in the world. And we had to build a representative sample of that, which is about 600 companies. And we had to get data for each of those companies going back 20 years. Um, so that took a long time. How easy was it to convince people to contribute data to this project? Quite a few people were convinced that this would help the industry. It would help transparency, it would help uh, document the track record of infrastructure investment, and therefore we had a lot of support. Uh, we also collected data from uh, the raw source, uh, going to various markets, uh, reading the accounts of a whole bunch of companies, aggregating all this information in order to uh, have a representative set and uh, be able to uh, really track the market. And you mentioned a bit about how useful it has been. Um, how has the industry found the benchmarks? How are they using it? So there are three main uses. Um, asset allocation, which is to understand how much you should be investing in infrastructure in the first place, to be able to compare infrastructure investment on a risk-adjusted basis with other asset classes. Second, understand performance, for instance, the performance of your own portfolio, the performance of the managers that you've hired, um, and compare the market with how well how you're doing individually. And third, risk management, which is to understand what risk factors you're being exposed to through your infrastructure asset class uh, and infrastructure investments, and to manage these risks across multiple asset classes, which is cutting edge stuff these days, uh, <laughs> but it's something that uh, people can do now with the data that we produce. And a question for you, are we at peak infrastructure or is there still room for growth? Ah, people say that uh, prices have increased a lot and that it's going to turn around, perhaps, but it's reached a maximum level. It's true that discount rates are quite low, now reaching 7%. But if you look at cash yield, cash yield is quite high still compared to other asset classes. And so I think there's still room for infrastructure prices to increase, reflecting the uh, risk profile and probably uh, the demand that investors have for high yielding uh, instruments. That's an interesting prediction. Frederick, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.